welcome back to another video. My name is Alize and I'm your favorite black transsexual. Get up into the bed part or whatever. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I just want to say thank you guys for all the love and support. You know I had to sit over here and re-record this video. Girl, I deleted it last night and y'all were just going to get this video. But you know, I wanted to be stupid and press the delete button no accident. So let's redo this video. Before we get into today's video, I need you guys to like, comment, and subscribe because you will never find another black transsexual like me. Hello, hello, hello. I'm your favorite black transsexual. I'm beautiful. You're beautiful. We need to be beautiful, Mitchells. You already know. Get up into the big prayer or whatever. Dime, dime, love. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about my unpopular opinions on these gay influencers because, girl, some things need to be said and nobody's going to shut me up because, girl, I'm kind of, you know, getting a little baffled with these, you know, queens or whatever so let's get into the mix of it so the first topic that i want to talk about is that jeffree star i would never support him ever again and so i need all of my sisters and my queens to come here and listen to me when i say this like um personally like you know i know y'all seen jeffree star through past through the past years and you know y'all seen him do his controversial ways and if you don't know exactly what i'm talking about i'm gonna insert the clip right here so go you say black folk cannot wear mac house medicine you splash your ass in your face well maybe if she wasn't wearing the wrong foundation color i wouldn't have to splash no battery acid i wanted to lighten her skin tone girl what you did to you know i know what you did to my little sister you slapped her at walgreens who that little black bitch but Jeffree Star acting the way that he's acting, it's like, girl, you're baffling me because I don't like stuff like that at all. That's weird behavior, and that's coonish of you. And then, you know, I had a point in my time where I accepted his apology because, you know, Jeffree Star, you know, had a whole apology video where he apologized for all his other stuff. And he still has the video up. Mind you, it's monetized. So, like, girl, you know, you know, if you know, you know. But it's like, girl, the thing about it and the thing that I really want to say is, when you see somebody like that that acts the way that they act that stuff makes all that makes you look at you know these people you know weirdly but you know the thing that i'm trying to get um integrate myself i'm trying to like mature i'm trying to realize that every person of you know this is not like you know uh sis they're not you know rude they're not coonish and you get what i mean and i'm gonna start another clip of him and his ignorance because it's like girl what are you doing <laughs> seeing jeffree star and the way that he asked it's like it doesn't make me want to ever you know sit over here and support him again because it's like girl say you know my people were to sit here and say some off the wall stuff we're immediately canceled we lose all of our brand deals we lose everything but he will stay here and still have a platform to this day this man is still making 500 to nearly a billion dollars just from his makeup and his you know connections in the beauty industry like he's still one of the top selling you know makeup you know gurus and you know the beauty industry because it's like girl he's iconic he's him and you know i would never discredit a gay person because i love gay people and i love you know people but it's like the only thing about me is like i don't like that type of stuff and you know i don't know why y'all keep supporting people like that like it's weird it's weird and you sit here so supporting somebody that doesn't even like you for real and is only after your money you're coon that's coonish behavior but i also do want to say that he did apologize and you know he did say that he is very sorry to, you know, our community or whatever. And, you know, you be like, you know, do I really care? Do I really accept this apology? And I don't speak on behalf of everybody, but it's like, girl, you know, you get to a point in your life where you're like, you know, you're so used to people saying stuff like that. It's like, girl, oh, well, girl, don't say it to my face because, girl, it'll be a different predicament. And it's just like, girl, at the end of the day, it's Jeffree Star. What more do we expect? The next topic that I want to talk about is Jane Charles was never sorry. So, y'all remember when Jane Charles got exposed for sitting over here, you know, being the way that he is and being an ill person. I really want to get here and, you know, speak on this whole Jane Charles situation and bring it back to light. Because what I'm trying to, you know, ingrain into people's heads is if you're gay or trans or bisexual or just whatever, you know, and you're sitting here trying to make a straight person like you, that is really kind of weird to me. Like, my whole thing is you don't need to sit here and make somebody who is not, you know, truly attracted to you. Like, you don't need to sit here and force that upon people. Because something that I try to learn and something that I'm learning still to this day is like, you know 
a person is going to show you if they truly like you and a person is going to truly truly show you if they mess with you or not you get what i mean you get what i mean and with James Charles, he was sitting here trying to, you know, force his gayness upon people. And that's the main reason why a lot of, you know, straight people don't like gay people or they say they don't like gay people is because they're sitting here saying, they say, like, you know, don't, you know, try to force that gay stuff upon me. And I'd be like, you know, we all look at those straight people and we're like, you know, what are you talking about? But, like, clips like this of James Charles will just prove, like, you know, I kind of understand where they're coming from right here, right now. Twist. The last phone conversation that James Charles and I had, he said some things telling me about a situation that happened in Seattle at my birthday and it literally made me want to vomit. Oh my God, you tried to trick a straight man into thinking he's gay yet again and somehow you're the victim. You know, it's really disgusting to manipulate someone's sexuality especially when they are still you know emerging into adulthood and don't quite have everything figured out you are using your fame your power your money to play with people's emotions you're threatening to ruin them you're threatening to embarrass them and you're doing that to have them behave sexually in your favor even if they're straight and you know what that's not okay and how dare you laugh about it and make meme after meme and retweet and this and that and i love straight boys i love straight boys and make it a joke i have matured and grown up mm -hmm. way faster than anybody else my age we also have very similar taste in guys too <laughs> hot masculine straight <laughs> We just want what we can't have. So he's not stupid. He's not an idiot. He knows he's going after straight boys. Because this behavior is not normal. It's not okay. Cracking someone's sexuality is not an escape room. This is shit that will follow them for the rest of their life. I used to get one time because I left school early to go pick up a straight guy that went to another school that I knew was on the DL to hook up with him. You have an issue with straight boys. I do. You need to work it out. I'm working on it, girl. You have to be able to find a masculine gay guy. I mean, there are a million of them, but there's no challenge in that. That's never going to end in a relationship. Well, not with that attitude, it won't. <laughs> if you could give me one piece of advice you think that would help to find me a man, what would it be? I don't think you should have a problem. I oh. think you're confident. I think you're talented. Oh. I think you're successful. You're young. Yeah, you're attractive. You know how to dress yourself. If That's anything, you're just looking in the wrong places. Like, maybe stop looking at the straight guys and you need someone to tell you to stop it. And that's exactly what I did in your kitchen in front of Gabriel Zamora. I thought around his parents that he would not behave this way. Like it was just like, no big deal. Like sucking dick and cock. Like I'm just like, oh my God. Talking in detail about things you wanted to do to the waiter. And when I said, James, he's straight. Your response was, doesn't matter, I'm a celebrity. So freaking gross. And you said that in front of my family in front of my childhood friends, I had to call every one of them up the next morning and apologize on your behalf because it was so uncomfortable. I, uh, you know, add insult to injury, the sugar bear hair thing, that was a blatant lie, like come on. You went to Coachella, somehow had a security issue, and magically sugar bear hair is there with a contract in hand to save the day for you and all of your friends. And then there's another clip of, you know, Troy's TV also, you know, breaking it down over here. So after I denied any, like, any of that. Okay, I'm sorry, y'all, but boring. Oh, my God. Anywho, basically, he felt the need to make that video because James was constantly subtweeting him, saying, oh, I was messing around with this one person, and he played me and used me for clout. And people knew who he was because when people were recognizing James at Coachella, people were posting him. People were like following, stalking James and taking pictures of him and saying, oh, wow, looks like James got a new nigga. So people knew who this guy was because social media ended up putting two and two together and figuring out that they were dating. So that's why he felt the need to make this video to clear his name because he was getting hundreds of death threats. It's just like, you know, you get to a point in your life where you're just sitting over here and you're like, is it really that serious for you to sit here and try to make somebody like you? Like, why don't you go after somebody who is attracted to you in that type of way? Like, the main thing about me is I attract straight men. and That's just something that I do. That's just something. That's just who I am. I attract them. Do I like them? No, I do not. They're boring. They don't have no ambitions. They don't have no goals. A lot of straight men that I attract are hoodlums or they're sitting over here, you know, pow, 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 boom, 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 ka, 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 do, 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 doom 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 if you get what i mean you get what i mean 
Um, my main thing that I'm trying to get across to this video is like, you know, when I see a straight man, he sits over here, you know, and he says, you know, he figures out that I'm trans and he's like, you know, I'm not with that, you know, you know, gay stuff or whatever, but I will be cool with you. And just as friends, you know, I'm like, okay, that's cool. You know, I'm not going to sit here and force that upon anybody. If they don't like me, they don't like me. I'm not going to sit here and try to, you know, be like, oh my goodness, you know, why don't you like me? Why don't you like me? This and that. You know, maybe just because you haven't found the right, you know, gay person or the right trans person to, you know, bring out that gayness in you. Girl, don't ever do that. That's coonish behavior to sit here and force yourself upon somebody. If somebody tells you they don't like you, you don't need to sit here and try to force yourself upon them at all, at all. So, period, point blank. And then... Y'all remember when he had his little um, controversial scandal with him and, you know, the drain or whatever. And it's just like, girl, yikes. Like, girl, it's not that serious. You know, I always will hold somebody accountable if they're sitting over here talking to, you know, and I'm not talking about, you know, us girls. I'm talking about the, you know, the whatever. And he's nasty for that and i feel like it would have never came out like you know if jeffree star didn't bring it to light and if y'all don't know what clip i'm talking about i'm gonna show you a clip right here so let me word this the right way i got cocky and thought that i could expose someone else's trauma mm -hmm. and story to x out someone else that person did not want me to therefore this person is still free Do and it. to see this person still out there they're not thriving like they used to be at all mm -hmm. is just interesting but the industry does have demon demonic snakes yeah <laughs> he's the biggest piece of shit in the beauty industry wow and really? he allegedly has done a lot of horrible things he admitted to talking to minors he is a fucking piece so of that shit. is true i just say i always stay out of the drama he did a video allegedly not allegedly admitting to minors one of the most vile human beings on this planet and yeah. i have never really talked or addr addressed these things yeah but he is a literal fucking monster people aren't ready for the truth everyone wants to keep their mouths shut and they keep why right if someone is bad let people know yeah no you I have a-list celebrities literally using this shit. yes kim kardashian we're talking to you you're using his makeup? Absolutely. I'll have yeah. to you'll have to tell me who it is later mm -hmm. so I can steer clear of that human. <laughs> oh, his name is James Charles. Seeing Jeffree Star say something like that, it's like, girl, oh my goodness, wow. Like the girls and the gays is fighting, but I'm just like does it have anything to do with me no it doesn't and it's like you know i try to stay away from the beauty gurus and i try to stay away from those people because they just they get so entitled and they get so lost in their fame and their clout and they're just you know quote-unquote celebrity status because i always try to ingrain this in anybody's um head even if you become a, a celebrity or you become famous or you just get a certain amount of you know what do you want to call it power you don't ever need to lose yourself you need to stay humble as much as you can because like i said like i said again you know god can always humble you god can always sit here and show you that you know he can easily take it away just with a snap of a finger don't ever sit here and lose yourself just because you're sitting over here thinking you're above everybody nobody is above anybody everybody in this world is should be equal period point blank and don't mind the airplane in the background we're going to ignore it but no see no shade it's like girl you cannot sit here and lose yourself and that's all always something i always try to you know stay humble about even if i get a certain amount of you know fame or a certain amount of followers or a certain amount of money like i'm gonna always remember where i came from and i feel like beauty gurus like them they always lose themselves because they're just thinking they're above people they already found this and they're just like you know look at all these poor people let me get all these poor people to buy my stuff it's like girl I don't like stuff like that. I don't at all. So it's just like, girl, I'm going to separate myself from them and move happily along on my soul. Oh, damn, homies, on my soul. The next topic that I want to talk about is Miss Netta and Charles are toxic. So if you don't know who Miss Netta and Charles is, um, let me insert the clip right here. So Miss Netta was born as Joe Robinson on June 2nd, 1977. And it looks like he's originally from Cleveland, but now resides in Alabama. So this is making him 46 years old today. Now, Joe was born a male, but it seems like he always presented himself as a female because his old Facebook name was Joe Netta, which he eventually shortened to Netta. He recently did a sit down with T.S. Madison, where he revealed that he was in fact born a male and what he identifies as. Are you a part of the, are you a part of the LBGTQIA community? No, I'm not. Okay, I just asked, I wanted to know, okay. Oh, okay, okay. Ask that question one more time. Miss okay. Netta, are you a part of the LBGTQIA community? I didn't quite understand you, but yes, I am. 
Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, because I, I didn't, I know even, you know, I'm trans, and so my pronouns are she and her, so I respect everybody's pronouns. And obviously, I'm not going to call you anything but she and her because you play the woman role over there frying right. bacon and sautéing for, <laughs> for Charles, honey. But are, so what area would you fall under in the LBGTQA community? Are you non-binary, trans? You know, I never, um, I never uh, categorized myself in none of that. I just always been myself. Mm -hmm. And this me, my everyday look, you know, all, all this, my everyday look and stuff. And um, it's just something I've just been doing ever since I was, you know, growing up in life. And I don't think I'm a transsexual. I don't think I'm a, a, a whatever the other names they got. I don't like calling them. But uh, I don't think I'm none of those. I just more be like myself. You know, my, my stage name is Miss Netta. Uh -huh. A lot of people knows my real name, uh, thanks to the internet, which is fine, but um, it doesn't matter. A lot of people say I'm ashamed of my sexuality, which I am not, because people here in our city knows me and everything. So um, it wasn't about me hiding my sexuality, because I'm, I, we are well known here in the city. But uh, it was just more like if that was my business, and when I wanted to put when I want to put my business out, then that's when I do it, and I just wasn't ready yet. Mm -hmm. So you know the girl, the girls are gagging to know when you say your uh, sexuality. So this means w were you born male like me? Because I was born male. <laughs> yes, I was born male. Okay, sister, what the thing? <laughs> so who are, who are, uh, whoever that's watching this, y'all got y'all in. But by the looks of his old Facebook, it looks like he grew up in a close-knit family and he had several siblings. He did graduate from high school and it looks like he worked a couple jobs after high school and he was also known on Facebook as a comedian. It also seems like he was in another long-term relationship before Charles came along, but there was no mention if this was his significant other or not, but it does look like it based off the picture. It was also a rumor that Netta had a wife but I didn't find any real proof on this, and Miss Netta also addressed this and said it was false. Um, I was married to a woman in 2019, and I was just like, these people in my city are just laughing. They're like, these people on here is done lost their mind. They really don't know you. I said they really don't. You know, yeah, like I said, they they it, there was so much lies and stuff going on. Then they had somebody on there that was telling the lies. She on a yes, that was my that was my husband on two thousand two thousand nineteen, and I don't got nothing bad to say about him because we still have a good conversation. Like, lady. Who is you? I don't know. Then I would have looked her who up. Fuck, who the fuck is you? I would have looked her up. Her page is gone. Hey, so I'm just going to say, like, did he, did he orchestrate this? Now, according to Miss Netta, she met Charles six years ago on social media. Me and Charles, we've been together for six years. Mm -hmm. And um, we met on social media. Okay. Did who, <laughs> reach out to, who reached out to who? Mm, she reached out to me. Mm. I didn't know it. Didn't know it at first, but then I said I gave the safe chance. <laughs> now, Charles was born Rolandis Alexander on May 14, 1989, making him 34 years old today. And he is from Alabama as well. Seeing Miss Netta and Charles, you know, they popped up on my For You page a lot of times now. Like, they be popping up every single day, at least one time a day, you know, when I get on TikTok. And, you know, at first I got so annoyed with seeing them on my For You page. I would sit here and be like, you know, why um, are these people f um, popping up on my For You page? And then what gagged me is I didn't know Miss Netta was actually a man. And Miss Netta doesn't actually, you know, go by she, her pronouns. She just, you know, likes to get called she. She does. She's not even trans. And I, oh. So seeing T.S. Madison ask them that and stuff like that, it's like, girl, okay, you know, this is very interesting. You know, they're very interesting individuals. But like, what really got me into them, I one day saw Miss Netta arguing with Charles on live and literally the live just popped up on my For You page. So I was like, girl, I clicked it and I'm watching. She just argued about nothing. She just rambling and rambling and rambling. My whole thing is like, I understand in relationships that you have, you know, arguments that y'all can sit here and disagree on some things. But it's like to the point where you're sitting here arguing about every little thing every single time in your relationship. That's the point where, you know, that's where y'all are starting to break a part at and i'm gonna insert a clip of them arguing for like literally no reason like miss netta will argue just about the itty bitty little things hey, how are you i'm feeling wonderful i just came up to say hey okay. how was your christmas oh it was good and how about you my christmas was good where y'all from <laughs> this is fucking <laughs> 
I don't know. But yeah, um, what you saying? Where y'all from? Oh, we're from Alabama. Tell Miss Netta, we not trying to get you. We ain't trying to we make her exactly. jealous. No, we love, love Miss Netta. Talking to these women on the phone and everybody keeps coming over to my other uh, live. How's that? I just Probably started you. talking to one. But Miss Netta, they more. just Jesus. Tried. We're not doing that. I just start. Come on now. You know what? Boy, I just started talking. Yeah, I just started. Is that all you see what the shit I you see what I go through. I yeah. see Charles. Bitch, don't be uh, feeling about what you go through. I ain't got time. I'm saying I'm saying just talking to one person. And they're gonna let, let social media come in between y'all. Don't let social media come yeah, in they, between y'all because it's exactly. true. If she can't handle it, these people are about the wrong thing. I'm not if you are. I'm not if you are. Talking to gender, you know, I don't got time for this. You know, this is just come I'll tell you what. Bring your phone to come in with me since you feel that way. Apparently you feel some type of way. I'm up at what they run and they keep telling me. Sweetheart, Anybody if that's the case, you? bring your ass in here. I bring your ass in Yes, you do. No, I do not. Well, I don't know what to tell you. I don't either. I'm sitting here communicating, well, not flirting, live, Charles, not right. talking all right. types of shit or nothing. And now I got to hear this bullshit from you. And you putting it all on social media with everybody here and fanning. Hey, I ain't even putting nothing personal. I ain't even say shit personal. Well, you, you don't understand. I do understand. Well, you know. Did you hear me say? You, we not are to... social media icons at this point in time. Okay. All this stuff that you're doing, regardless if it's true or not, is going to come back to me, and probably some of it is going to come back to you. Eat our lunch, honey. Uh, really? Yeah. Excuse me. Oh, yeah. There you go. You happy? Oh, no, I'm not happy. Well, too bad. The people might be happy. You got to get over there just a little bit. Okay. I can do it. Oh, well, fuck it. Let me get the fuck up out here because it's all in. Okay, see, I said I was doing. I ain't need you to pull me. So she's sitting over here accusing this man of cheating on her, this and that. And, you know, sitting over here talking to other women. It's like, you know, girl, you get to a point in your life, like, if you're thinking that your man is cheating on you, why are you staying with somebody who you think is cheating on you or who is cheating on you? Because the thing that I always will preach is if somebody's cheating on me, I'm leaving. I'm going bye-bye on my soul. I'm going to exit the door, period. Because, like, I have so much respect for myself and I'm not trying to preach. I just want to preach this to everybody else who is watching this video if you truly love somebody why would you sit there and try to harm somebody why would you sit there and hurt their feelings or why would you sit there and go step out the relationship like that's wrong so like you know to sit here and somebody in your relationship is you know accusing you of cheating this and that nine times out of ten they're the ones doing that like i always had to call a spade a spade and my main thing is with miss netta it's like girl if you think he's cheating, you need to step off the internet for a little bit. Like, girl, if you know he's not cheating, but you keep thinking that he's cheating, just step off the internet. Take a, take a break. Take a break. Because I'm going to insert another clip of them arguing about the littlest thing. They damn uh, being messy and shit. They always going to be messy. Hell, they up here telling me that you run me, that you own everything, uh, including me. Okay, do I? Do I? No. So but what the I'm hell just... you got to explain it to them for? Hell, I ain't explain shit. They up here telling me that. Okay, That's they the can't point. tell you shit. You know what you run? I mean, hell, I know what I run too. I'm you not know, worried you about it. You, you don't do shit. You don't do shit for me. Like, then they look at that thing. Sweetheart, I do more for you than anything. So fuck what they talking about. Okay. okay. But they don't, you don't have to tell them. Sweetheart, they, uh, okay. Call, call, I ain't stand with the left. Take your damn phone from you. I'm gonna take these nuts. It's like, girl, I just like, I don't know what to do with Miss Netta and them. And she's kind of getting annoying now. Like, she be getting on my nerves. And then I'm going to insert just one more clip of her sitting over here. And this is where I was like, girl, Charles, I think it's time for you to leave right now. Right now. Food yet, but if I wouldn't have came in, you would have damn had touched the food. Uh, you don't know shit. Yes, I do know. I know you do. Yes, I do. And first of all, I always wash my damn hands. Well, did you wash your hand then? Just because I did. Okay, you, they all, you don't always wash First of all, like I said, I don't do shit on your time. Okay, yes, you're gonna do it on you my time. If this is gonna be my food that I'm eating too. That's just like me coming in here, goddamn playing with Lily and loving on Lily and coming here and frying you some goddamn chicken. Some fried dog chicken, that's what you want? Well, we know you know better than doing that. And you should know better than wash your you should wash your like hands before you play my damn food. Like I said, nobody ain't played the shit. And like I, I said, I'm looking. Care. 
There's a difference between looking and wearing. I don't care how you shoot a motherfucking I know you don't. You know what? You know, and you don't, you don't, 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 don't give a damn. damn. Okay, I'm going to show you why I don't give a goddamn. Because I ain't eating this damn shit. This shit going in the damn trash. I ain't eating this goddamn shit. You put it in the sink and sick and I ain't gonna see him let you do something stupid. To see her act like that, it's like, girl, that's immature for your age. Like, she's nearly 40 years old. I don't even know if she's 40 years old. But, like, she's nearly 40 years old. And she's sitting over here acting like that. Like, girl, it gets to no point in your life where you used to shit here and drag a man like that. Like, that's wrong. That's weird. And, and that whole relationship, I feel like it's just a PR sign. I feel like it's just for clout. Because, like, there should be no reason. There should be no reason why your relationship is that toxic. Like, that's toxic. Like, that's let next level Christian rock behavior like I'm, I'm sorry I'm sorry I gotta call it spade to spade so my personal opinion is I feel like they're truly gonna break up and I feel like they're truly like bound to like you know flop like I, I feel like you know next like I give it five to ten years from now they're literally gonna you know be a memory like lovely peaches and how she was big one minute and now nobody talks about her the next minute that's literally what's gonna happen for these lips. wrap it up the next topic that I want to talk about is I don't know why Shane Dawson still has a career. This one is going to ruffle a lot of people's feathers. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to insert a clip of, um, you know, him sitting over here doing, you know, face or whatever. Right. Uh, this is a story all about how my life got twisted upside down. And favorite bodily fluid. Oh, n monkey woman. You're the best. Shane Dawson and his, you know, ignorant behavior, that, like, I didn't even know that Shane Dawson was sitting over here acting the way that he was acting. Like, that absolutely blew my mind. And to see him still have a certain amount of, you know, fame and still have a certain amount of clout and still have a, a platform, a YouTube channel, that absolutely blew me. Like, that I'm blown to proportion because it's like... You get to a point in your life where, you know, behavior like that is unacceptable. Like, he's at that age where you're sitting over here doing that type of stuff. Like, you're already grown. You're not no child. So, you know right from wrong. Like, are we slow? Like, you know right from wrong. So, I hate when people sit over here and be like, he was young. He didn't know no better. What, did he know no better for this? Um, hmm. What's good? That is a good question. Hold up. Enrique, what the f is that smell? Ooh, you better put that away. Uh-uh, no, 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 not up in here, no, no. You know I got La Migra on speed dial and I ain't afraid to use it. You know I got La Migra on speed dial and I ain't afraid to use it. Hey, mother it's your name, name. and black as and we at the beach. But can I touch you, please? Sure. Oh, 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 oh. You underage, right? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Oh, Hey, it's your name. This is my best black friend, Black. Am I your only black friend? No, there's. Oh, she's help. Oh, she's help. Yeah, I guess you are. Oh, no, wait. No, you're help. Oh, here, let's do a reenactment of the voice. You can play, obviously, CeeLo Green. And, <laughs> and I will play Christina Aguilera. People are gonna be like, oh my God, Shane is such a queen. Can you believe Shane Dawson bounced back? Now, let's talk about the fact that Jada Pinkett Smith and Jaden Smith dragged the fuck out of Shane Dawson. So, basically, this particular video decided, this, this, this particular video came out of nowhere. It came out of nowhere of Shane Dawson playfully doing this in front of a Willow Smith poster in 2010. And anyone that knows anything about Willow Smith, everyone knows that Willow Smith was a huge star back in 2010 during the Whip Your Hair era, right? So we all know how old Willow Smith was. So for him doing this, mind you, Shane is 31. This was 10 years ago. So Shane was 21. I'm not going to hold you, and I always will say this. If y'all can sit here and still support this man. Y'all can still sit here and support Chris Brown. Y'all can still sit over here and support R. Kelly. Because it's like, y'all let all these, you know, celebrities or whatever you want to call it, these comedians get away with these um, crazy behaviors. Like, this is crazy behavior. Police! Help! 
if anybody is sitting over here watching me um and let me tell y'all something if you have a friend of this skin tone that sit here and says the you know hard r around you or says the a word around you if you get what i mean you get what i mean if they're saying that around you and they're like oh does that bother you oh um can i say this can i say that will you sit here you know hit me or this and that girl let me tell you something and this might ruffle a lot of people's feathers and i don't care <laughs> i'm me i'm alizea but like um if you have to sit here and ask your friend if um you can say the hard r if you can say this nine times out of ten you don't need to say it in the first place like let's be for real let's be for real and y'all sitting here saying well i let my friend say it because you know uh it really doesn't offend me this and that but you know the contents behind that word you know the contents behind that stuff you know the contents behind what that means why would you sit here and allow that type of behavior that's wrong that's absolutely wrong like I don't understand that if you are a you know person of color or you a person of a darker skin tone and somebody is sitting here being you know biased towards you you need to remove that person from your you know your inner circle because at the end of the day that's wrong you don't need to ever let that behavior slide period i don't let nobody's behavior slide if they're going to be ignorant around me i mean it i mean it so much i don't play about my respects i don't play about you know my rules i don't play about none of that like girl i have standards for my friends and my friends can't follow my standards they're getting blocked immediately and i don't see how y'all can still support this man to this day like he still has connections in the industry like that's crazy y'all are going to jail the next topic that i want to talk about the next topic that i want to talk about is saucy santana is washed up girl so when i tell you i have never in my life girl when i tell you i've never in my life seen such a you know rapper that thinks they're above somebody or a celebrity that thinks they're above people i like i said i always tell people don't ever think that you're above anybody just because of some level and some fame and just some clout i don't understand those type of people and i would never understand those type of people just because you get a certain amount of followers or just because you get a certain amount of likes or just because you got a certain amount of money doesn't mean you're above people and if y'all don't know what i'm talking about i'm gonna insert the clip right here Wearing what appears to be a black sports bra, red tights, and the performer's signature trim beard and long eyelashes. I'm a rapper. I'm a rapper. Like, I'm a the music artist was visibly distraught. At times in tears. But when Saucy got feisty. to treat a gunshot wound to the arm him saying that he's a celebrity i'm a celebrity oh my goodness da, 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 da. nobody cares if you're a celebrity you're a grown man and that's all you will be like me y'all will sit here and call me a grown man we're all human beings at the end of the day we all came from you know i don't know who we came from but we all came from who we came from no tea, no shade. I'm going to be 100% for real with you when I say this. Just because you have a certain amount of money, like I, I keep rambling about this, but just because you have a certain amount of money doesn't mean you're above people. And the way that he thinks, it gives me messy gay. Like, I don't like the way he thinks. It gives me weird vibes. And the thing about him is... I used to be a big Saucy Santana supporter. I used to love me some Saucy Santana. When he first released Walking Like a Dog, that's when I got introduced to Saucy Santana because it was like, if your baby mama aggravated and walking like a dog, hey, walking like a dog, hey, walking like a dog. Everybody was streaming that song like you had to be there in that time frame. But then I feel like he got bigger and bigger and he started to lose himself. He started to try to act mainstream, if you get what I mean. He tried to, you know, get into that type of music. His music was about a, like, you know, you know, if you know, you know, I can't say it because I will get demonetized on here. But I feel like once you get to a certain amount of um, fame, you should never try to, you know, conform to the mainstream market. Because, like, girl, your general fans love you for you. And what really turned me off about him, I don't know if y'all ever seen him sitting over here talking about Beyonce and her child. But if y'all don't know what I'm talking about, let me insert the clip right here. Why am I just seeing this? 
and kids. In one tweet, he replied to a Twitter user that said, I just want to be like Blue Ivy. Santana then replied to this saying, Nappy headed or. There are so many things wrong with this tweet. And the first thing is him referring to Blue's hair as nappy. I'm not sure what you guys know this, but the term nappy hair has derogatory origins and has racist undertones. If he also tweeted, I'm sorry, but Northwest Claire's Blue Ivy have several seats. She said this yesterday. So not only is he cool with shaming kids, but he is also cool with comparing little kids. The wild thing is that Blue was just two years old and North was one when he made that tweet. What point of comparing two kids to see who's finer? He was an entire adult when he said this. Santana also body shamed Beyonce when she was pregnant with her twins, Sir and Rumi. Someone tweeted, Beyonce has that pregnancy glow. And Santana replied, she looks dry to me. This is even weirder because he didn't have to say anything in the first place. The original poster was not talking to him and he wasn't even tagged in a tweet. He literally just woke up and chose to be weird on the internet. Now, if you've been on... And in his first tweet, he said, fake woke bees. People don't care about old tweets. The internet has this weird thing with power. Thinking they have the power to cancel someone. Newsflash. You don't. Y'all be thinking y'all have someone by the balls about situations you don't care about. I'm not gonna lie, like, you know, I used to love Saucy Santana, and I didn't realize, you know, when he released that song with Lotto, that's when um Sweet Surface, when he released that song with Lotto, I can't say the um title, but uh that's when those tweets resurfaced and then he's sitting over here saying like you know y'all are sitting here always trying to cancel people i can't be canceled this and that just because you think you you achieved a certain amount of followers and you achieved a certain amount of um fame your relevancy can go down your clout can go down that money can get short don't ever think you're above people just because you got a certain amount of followers just because you got a certain amount of things like don't ever lose yourself, man. I feel like he lost himself once he finally got that one real viral hit. And then he finally got on live with Nicki Minaj. I feel like when he got on live with Nicki Minaj, he really over here sat here and thought, lost himself. And that's why Nicki Minaj unfollowed him. And that's why Nicki Minaj don't mess with his big blue but it's just like girl i've gotten to the point where i'm just like girl that has nothing to do with me i don't care um you know i'm not gonna sit here and support anybody that wants to sit here and thinks they are above people like you're weird and i'm tired of these weird gays like i really am tired of weird gays like why can't we all just come along and you know be nice and cool and cordial because at the end of the day i'm always keep saying this at the end of the day we're all gay people at the end of the day we're all a smaller group of people at the end of the day we all have to stay together regardless if we like each other or not because this is our life people don't like us and you just sit here and try to you know discredit everybody because you got some money and stuff like that like you're weird at the end of the day you're weird clock that tea next topic that i want to talk about and this one's gonna ruffle some feathers and it might come hot me in the future we love shay is boring y'all might be like girl who is we love shay girl i'm not gonna explain like i said um but we love shay is getting so boring i've gotten to the point where you know i'll click on shay's video and i'm like you know oh my goodness what is shay gonna get into but you know when you click shay's video here goes the ad first is the ad right so you skip the ad next is shay's ad we got shay sitting over here singing for two minutes in the video and it's just like girl boring so i'll skip that then girls there's another ad so you'll skip that ad. then we got the two minute intro and then he'll pause Man, if you don't get into the video, but you know, like, you know, I'm so used to Shay doing it. I'm like, okay, cool, 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 cool. But then lately, it's like, I've gotten bored of Shay. I got bored of his content. I want something new and I want something refreshing. Like, YouTube has gotten so boring. He don't even be on Bego anymore. He don't even do Instagram like stuff anymore. He don't even go on Instagram live no more, for real. Like, I've gotten to the point where I'm just like, girl, what do you do anymore? Like, girl, do you not want to show us your every day to day life? Like, I know you have achieved a certain amount of money. I know you have achieved a certain amount of fame and stuff. But me as a Shay supporter or a Shay mob, um, like, I love Shay. Don't ever get me wrong. When, you know, Shay sits over here and posts a video, you don't know what you're going to get. Shay is a motivational person. And one thing about it and two things for show, Shay can rap. Um, when I sat over here and, you know, finally got um, introduced to Shay and Shay was in, you know, his, his prime or whatever, right? Shay released that one song, like, we love that. And, you know, I'm going to put it right here. You know, we love that. That song was so good. I was like, girl, oh, my goodness, you really ate down. Like, you really ate down. I was like, hold up. You need to be, you know, somebody's ghostwriter. Like, hello. No, Tino, Shay, though, I'm not going to hold you like 
you know, seeing Shay sit over here and, um, you know, be an iconic um, gay black person, that made me want to be a more iconic gay black person because I used to be insecure with myself. I used to hate the way, you know, um, I dressed. I used to hate the way that, you know, I presented myself. I hated my skin. I hated being, you know, gay and trans. But clicking a Shay video, that made me confident to see another gay black person do something like that. That made me so confident. But then I talked to one of my friends and, you know, one of my friends was like, you know, I asked um, one of my friends, I was like, do you like Shay or whatever, you know, uh, do you be uh, keeping up with Shay or whatever? She like, girl, I don't like Shay because, you know, Shay wants to sit over here and, you know, um, talk about, you know, he's not trans, this and that, but be imitating us dolls and stuff like that. I'm like, girl, what do you mean? She's like, you don't be seeing Shay sit over here and, you know, putting his mommy milkers up and sitting like that, talking like the fish. I'm like, girl. Hold up, that has nothing to do with me. Next caller! But I be seeing it, and I know how that could offend some people. So I'm like, girl, no Tino Shay, no Tino Shay, that has nothing to do with me, but I will side eye. You get what I mean? You get what I mean? But I have gotten to a point where I'm just like, you know, I'm over these celebs, I'm over these people. And he's gotten so repetitive, and I hate his intros. I will always, I'm never gonna hold my tongue with the intros. Like, I don't care. His intros are so long and boring. Like, I cannot stand it. And I feel like everybody skips the intros. Let's, let's be for real. Like, you can comment down below if you know who I'm talking about. Like, uh, I don't like, I don't like Shay's intros, but Shay is iconic. I would never give, I would never discredit Shay for his iconicness. He will always be iconic and he will always, you know, be that beach or whatever, right? But we get to a point in our life where we want more as the, you know, supporter. Or we want more as the person to, you know, sit here and consume your content. And this isn't, you know, to sit here and bash him. I'm just saying he's boring. Will I keep supporting? Every now and again, if, you know, I see an interesting video, I'll click on it. But other than that, I'm going to be like, you know, ba da ba 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 I'm moving on. Are you fucking dumb? The last, the final topic that I want to get into, and this one is going to ruffle people's feathers, is Sty is not ugly, nor is he boring. I am so sick of people sitting over here bashing Sty and sitting over here saying, Oh my goodness, he wanted to be a girl so bad. Oh my goodness, he wants to do this, he can't do that. Why is he always dressed like that? Girl, can y'all stop? Can y'all stop? Do y'all have anything else to do? Do y'all have anything else to do? Sty, when I first seen Sty back when I was in my, you know, prime or whatever on TikTok, you know, I first seen Sty and I was like, oh my goodness, this is iconic gay black boy. <coughs> Ooh. And I never understood that um the hate in Sty's comments or I never understood the hate just around Sty because it's like uh y'all seen that one, you know, situation where Keith sat over here and quote unquote called out Sty for being fat phobic and quote unquote called out Pluto for, you know, stealing his man. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me insert the clip. Sty texted me one day and he didn't say anything, it was no context, it was just a random tweet on Twitter. But in this moment, I wasn't in the mood to really talk to Sty. I wasn't in the mood to really deal with him because I keep I kept seeing clips of him being real fat phobic on his uh YouTube page. Now I personally don't watch Sty's YouTube. A lot of times if I ever saw a clip, it would be a clip that he was reposting on his like story or he was just reposting on his TikTok. You know what I mean? Clip that I finally was just like, okay, I'm done. Like it doesn't matter how many conversations I have with you, it doesn't matter how many times me and your other friends who used to be plus size and used to be big and used to always tell you about the things that you say tell you to stop saying those things you're gonna keep doing it because one you don't care but two you have no other personality other than being skinny it was a clip and he was doing I think DoorDash or something for a YouTube video and he was reading the girl's order and then he said yeah you know she's big um ordered two cheeseburger meals an apple pie and two dipping sauces okay she a little big but you know and it wasn't a big thing it was i was very i was just irritated but i was more fed up you only have a conversation with someone so many times so many tell him so many times to stop saying this stop doing that because it's even starting to transcend into his, his fan base you're boring sitting here and watching key's video i nearly fell asleep like i'm bored he literally made me so bored and it's like girl i get to a point where if you're not really talking about nothing why are you sitting over here rambling and making a whole nearly 30 minute video everything that he was saying in his video it's like girl what are you really talking about? Like, girl, if Sty is fat phobic, oh, well, people are going to support him if they want to. If they don't want to support him, they're not going to support him. Sty is interesting. And he's like, I don't know why his little supporters be supporting him. They're slow, this and that. 
nobody is slow sty is actually interesting when you click a sty video you're like oh my goodness what is sty going to talk about today what is sty going to do today he's going to do something interesting i like interesting content i like content that's going to make me laugh when i click a sty video i'm up and active when i click a keys video i'm dead asleep on my soul so it's like girl you get to a point it's like girl what are you sitting over here making this you know long form content for nobody really cares you could have summed it up and sat over here and said this and that but but it's like, girl, you get to a point, it's like, girl, nobody want to sit here and interact with that content. Like, girl, you're talking about nothing, like, literally. Next caller! And then, like I said before, um, I don't understand the Sty hate, like, for real. Like, y'all remember when um, Sty went to a Nicki Minaj concert? And if y'all know what I'm talking about, I'm going to insert the clip right here. Bitch, I can't find the video, but just enjoy a montage of Sty, you know, being him. Sorry. Oh, not there, right? I'm sorry. It was with the air. All up in my phone. Thank you. Yes. Yes, he was giving fish, he was giving fab, and he was giving everything it's supposed to be gave. And I'm not just saying that just because he follows me or whatever. Like, I'm saying that because he's an actual funny person. He's an actual cool person. He's an actual interesting human being. Like, I love black gay people like he's just so iconic and he does it so effortlessly like you know when you see him it's like oh my goodness like this is an interesting person like yes like slay queen because like when i see star i see somebody who doesn't care about what people think about him um and if star does care what people think he doesn't need to ever care about what people think and i'm not just saying you know to sit here and ignore the haters and stuff like that like girl everybody falls into the hater trap like girl but no tino shade like he never really sits over here and argues with people like he's just like okay cool i don't care like on to the next and i like that about him that is so iconic that's inspirational i like inspirational people i don't like boring people if you want to disagree with me you can disagree with me in the comments i really don't care um that wraps up for this video though just let me know y'all's opinions on you know all the topics uh stream Nicki minaj and don't get too out of line because i will hurry up and do the ba da ba ba blah on my soul beat so no tea no shade uh make sure you like comment and subscribe because you will never find another black transsexual like me hello 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 um i'm beautiful you're beautiful we gotta be beautiful mutuals and i'm glad you made it to the end of the video bye love stream Nicki minaj Ay